Howard on the phone. Georgiana Kopoulos, a Greek historian based in London and a visiting fellow at NYU this fall on the restoration of, of dignity. Uh, George, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. So let's talk about... Uh, Please, I mean, I, I think uh, our, our audience has been following uh, the events in Greece really over the past, I guess, five, six, seven years now um, with, 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 with some degree of attention. But give us a sense of what has happened I over the past uh, 18 months leading up to this uh, referendum yesterday which um, I, I guess it depends on who you are or, or were as to whether or not it was expected, but it was certainly stunning show uh, by any account. So uh, just uh, give us a brief rundown of how we got to where we are today and where that is. Right, thanks indeed. It, it, it is fascinating stuff, and obviously no one can uh, you know, offer full account not some degree of simplicity. So I mean, I'm just trying to do the best in an impossible task. Um, I mean, one would really have to take it, I would say, one way to talk about this would be to, 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 to talk about the implications of the electoral victory of Syriza, which is actually a much shorter story, a story of, of six uh, months. But the referendum idea, the referendum announcement, gives us a point of comparison with uh, the George Papandreou government uh, some years ago because that was the first time that a referendum idea was voiced in the Greek public. But and and this is back in, we should say, this is back in yeah. 2011. Exactly. This is the time of the second bailout. Uh, this is the time that the, that, that the Papandreou uh, government w wanted to negotiate a second uh, bailout and some sort of debt restructuring that actually didn't work for Greece, for any its people. And after agreeing uh, on the so-called second bailout terms, then Papandreou uh, had this brilliant idea of taking to the people the deal that he had already signed uh, and a secret referendum for this. I mean, many people then, and people from the left in Greece and elsewhere, saw it as a blackmail towards the Greek people because he had already agreed on the terms of the bailout. And... And uh, Greece's partners obviously didn't want to vote because there's this fear of the people in, in, many, in the minds of many EU uh, officials. And they effectively, uh, you know, uh, forced Papandreou to kill the referendum idea. And uh, the outcome was that she resigned shortly after that. And, the, and, and then we had a so-called technocrat government in Greece that implemented all the measures that Papandreou had negotiated. Um, so I would say this is the first uh, failed referendum idea, the first failed attempt to take to the people a deal that the Greek government had somehow they claimed they would negotiate. Now let me now, uh, let, let the, just so that we're clear on what the um, yeah. the elements of that deal were. It, it in real yeah. terms, essentially, it meant we're going to cut. Mm -hmm. Uh, things like pensions and services, and we're basically going to impose economic hardship on our own average citizen. Exactly. This was another across-the-board cut of pensions and, uh, and wages. There was not even a glimpse of any uh, you know, non-recessionary perspective, if you will. And what is worse, there was an agreed restructuring on the debt that didn't really relieve, that didn't really offer any relief. It just transferred the debt from private, or, uh, you know, private companies and private, private stakeholders to uh, the Europe's governments. And we are stuck here. This is pretty much what we're living now. It's pretty much the legacy of the decisions taken at that time. Because now we are stuck with the intransigence of any Greek government to engage in discussions about uh, debt relief in Greece. Okay. okay. So, uh, yeah. Okay. So now, when you say that it, it transferred, it, it transferred the uh, the creditor status from private entities to um, to European governments. 
Yes. Okay. Yes, this, this happened in 2011. It was, uh, it was, the deal was ratified by uh, a, 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 pan, a government shortly after the fall of Papandreou's government that was largely a government of technocrats. And many people then, and Syriza and many others, and many uh, American economists were arguing at that time that this is a serious mistake because it wouldn't offer any relief that debt, the, ma- the debt burden would continue. And it would make it harder for a future haircut or a future restructuring of the debt. And that's exactly what happened. Indeed. And, and here we are uh, years after with you know, hopes in Greece that a right a left-wing government will really try and negotiate and renegotiate the package. And the moment that the government uh, decided to put on the table the idea that there should be some sort of debt relief, relief in Greece because nobody's going to invest in Greece with that amount of debt. Then that moment passed, and, uh, and instead of that, we just had an ultimatum against the government to accept some actually not even rational terms. And that's why the government then, without having to sign, without signing anything, decided to go to take it to the people. Right. And, and I mean, what is, and I think there's probably um, uh, tens of answers uh, about this, and maybe the least, uh, the, the most yeah. obvious one is simply they want, uh, there's a certain amount of sadism and there's a certain amount of just a, a desired control. But, uh, and, and when we refer to the, the Troika, we're talking about uh, the EU and the IMF and, and, and basically these parties that are the, the, the creditors. Uh, and really, ultimately, the Germans in many respects. What is it that when they offer terms that basically say, because you've got something like what, the 25, 35 percent unemployment in uh, in Greece, you've yeah. got um, uh, uh, pensioners who have lost their pensions or, or, or had them s- substantially uh, cut down. You have incredible deprivation in Greece. And when essentially yeah. these Troika leaders come and say, like, we want more. Uh, and everybody seems to know that there's no way Greece, by by making uh, by making these cuts, is going to end up getting the money to pay off the debt anyways. What? what why are they doing this? Like, what, what is their yeah. agenda? Yeah, yeah. I mean, in the short in the short piece I wrote for for the Jacobin just a few days ago, I mean, a, a major. I argued there that a major. Uh, uh, sort of concept that one needs to bring to decide to understand that is that of moral hazard. One part of the equation is that the ones who are making the decisions do not want to see to, to seem to the European public and to the governments that have elections quite soon, uh, to the countries that have elections quite soon, that's to say Spain mostly, that they are giving in to Greece's demands. Because some in uh, in the northern part of Europe feel that you know, if this is to, 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 to happen, if they seem that they're giving leeway to this, then the other indebted, you know, Southern European governments will, uh, countries will come back and demand for uh, a settlement of their own debts as well. I mean, uh, there is an interesting, I just read it on Twitter or something, somebody tweeted interestingly that, uh, you know, commenting on Varoufakis' exit, Varoufakis' exit from the government, that Varoufakis seems to be a rebel without a burden clause. And actually, I feel this puts it succinctly, because what Varoufakis and the Greek government has been arguing is that you know, the, 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 the debt burden should be shared among the European partners. This is not only for Greece, for all the indebted countries. This is actually what a political union means. But we're far from any sense of the United States of Europe, I guess, and we have players and key players are acting based on the narrowest, uh, you know, calculation of what their national interest is. Okay. And, and, and just to add to this, yeah. Let me, let me just catch people up on, on, on some of this. So the referendum yeah. happens, and, 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 and I want to get back to your point, because that, that, that seems to be yeah. the crux of it, really. Um, is um, the the referendum happened yesterday. It won with an overwhelming no vote, essentially saying we reject, and and, and, and we'll talk more about this referendum too, because, uh, you know, I'm not sure that anybody um, 
really, it, it, they weren't necessarily voting on the text, I guess, of the referendum, yes. as much yes. as they were basically saying, like, do you want to give the finger to the EU, uh, is basically yeah. uh, the, the, what, what it seems like. But, uh, and, and Yanni Varif, uh, Varifakis, who is the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the financial minister of uh, Syriza's government, uh, resigned today, ostensibly yes. as a, I guess, a, a good-hearted gesture to the, the, the creditors in some fashion. But just to catch people up with what the, the facts have yeah. happened. Yeah. But I want to get back to that, that, that point that you're making. Yeah. So well, it's a moral hazard argument where the Northern uh, European countries yeah. don't want any of the yeah. Southern European countries who may be in financial distress to feel like they're going to get their debt forgiven as well. And, and people should remember that there are two parties to any loan. That is the lender and the borrower. And the lender is not doing it for free, right? Like that's their business. And they get interest ostensibly because they know some debts are going to go bad. That's right, right? Because they're assuming the risk. Exactly, and there's this element of uh, there's a right-wing populist driving this argument, convincing somewhat the people of, say, the northern countries that that the money that go the bad the bad money that go, that's gone to Greece are somewhat taken directly out of their wallets. So if you add to this equation the, that right-wing populism, then you get sort of northern creditor, mostly northern creditor governments. Uh, uh, not being able to 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 to, uh, to basically to act in a wider European interest. It, it is as if as if you know, although it's a different case. It is as if you know the, the United States as a country just lets California go its own way. It's because interesting because I've heard someone describe yeah. uh, what the what the attitude of the population is by saying, uh, imagine if uh, New Yorkers were asked to bail out Texas. But the reality is mm. that within our system, actually, more federal dollars leave New York and head mm. to Texas than vice versa. Uh, so um, in some ways, we do that. And, and that's because we are a country. So if I hear what you're saying is that in many respects, yeah. what's going on now is really the EU at a crossroads. It sounds like either it's going to be what was envisioned uh, 20-some-odd yeah. years yeah. ago. Is this really going to be a union, yeah. or is it just going to be some type of confederation that falls apart when everybody has to, you know, good times and bad times, yeah. right? Exactly. Exactly, absolutely. It is the crossroads. That's the point. We have had, I mean, if you think for a minute that right now, right now, today, as we stand, in fact, in this hour, the absolute decider on the fate of a country like Greece is the board of the European Central Bank, a bunch of obviously unelected technocrats who are running the national banks of the member states. I mean, this is absurdity in its own, uh, I cannot call it but absurdity. In Europe, we have a political union in paper. Uh, there is some sort of an economic union, and there is this unelected bureaucratic entity called ECB, which determines the fate of, of Greece's banks, and not only Greece's banks. I mean, it has to be a moment when, uh, and I feel this is actually the positive uh, uh, message of the Greek referendum that it, ha it has accelerated the decision time, if you will, for the future of Europe as a whole. You know, this is something that I think I, 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 didn't, I wasn't aware of until very recently, and, and please confirm it for me. But when we talk about these uh, central bankers, there's no, they are not, the, we still have a series of national central banks rather than an EU national bank. Is that right? Correct. It is, it's, a, it's quite interesting, though, because it started, as, as you say, but when they uh, decided, I mean, the ECB, when the European Central Bank decided to go toward, to do what it takes to save the euro, it, in a way, it moved towards a bit looking like the obvious federal uh, bank in America. But yet again, the decisions that are taken there are very much 
uh, calculations of uh, sums, if you will, of the national interests of the different national banks. And although they claim that they're a technocratic institution and you know they do not do pol- they do not do policy, they do not you know uh, do political acts, well, they make the rules of the game as they go along. Uh, and obviously, they their decisions are in line with what institutions like the Eurogroup uh, agree uh, say. Yet again, though, the Eurogroup is not a formal institution. So right now, I, I would say that, that, that the state of the Union, if you will, of the European Union, is in an utter mess, and decisions have to be taken. And Greece may play a positive part in role if Europe is to move into further uh, sort of integration. And it's fascinating because so you have these uh, bankers who are not, uh, they are not really contemplating what is the best case scenario for this uh, this this new re- well uh, you know relatively yeah. new i guess yeah. in in the great span of history yeah. institution that being the european union yeah. and instead they're simply yeah. saying like i'm from germany i'm going to focus on what's best yeah. for yeah. germany yeah. and presumably um, uh, German enterprises, right? I mean, this money yeah. was ultimately yeah. lent from yeah. Yeah. like private enterprises, and yeah. and 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 have those enterprises those enterprises have received basically a bailout from their own governments, right? Yes, yes. So yes, it, 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 yeah. I mean, what, one has to be obviously, you know, and as a historian, I'm, I'm, I'm always alert to historical analogies and everything. I mean, people have been arguing that the way things are going at right now, the, the states of Europe are sleepwalking to a crisis of historic proportions, and Greece here plays the Sarajevo moment, if you will, uh, in the last scheme of things. And obviously, one has to be aware of, you know, stereotyping against Germany, etc. But one has also to understand that the German capitalist actually has been gaining from, from this crisis. So by narrow national interest calculations, Germany has been doing okay. But it's now time for Germany and, and France to sort of act for, to, to decide what this union will be for. What ha- and, and before I, I want to get to sort of yeah. where this leads, yeah. but I, I, I'm, I'm just yeah. struck by, you know, the analogy for uh, um, yeah. that I think Americans will understand the the best here is um, we had a a crisis of of individual uh, foreclosures and the idea yeah. was we're going to bail out the banks not the homeowners because if we bail out the homeowners it's going to supposedly encourage other homeowners to supposedly get into a crisis mode and expect a bailout so instead we're going to bail out the banks and just trust them that they're going to relieve uh, provide relief for the homeowners that of course did not happen and so the that there's the 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 similar a similar analogy um uh, uh, on some level i guess insofar as that we were okay with the moral hazard from the lender's perspective, just not so much from right. the borrower's perspective. So so what happens... Right. Okay. Give me your sense of uh, Yanni Far- uh, Farkas's uh, resignation. Farkas. What, what, yeah. what, what is that really about? No, I mean, the way I see it is that we, it's just another tactical sort of ploy on this, and, and, and hopeful one on the side of the Greek government. It, the Greek government effectively is telling to its, to its, to its creditors and, and whoever is willing to engage with the Greek government right now that, uh, you know, uh, that if Varoufakis, uh, he had taken much heat because, because of his style of, you know, negotiating and his very plethoric persona. Although I have to say that he was crucial in internationalizing the Greek problem once again in the past five months. No, now it seems to be for me a gesture of goodwill into saying that, you know, if you've cleared Sakalotos, who is to be the, ne- the new, he's actually now announced to be the person who will succeed Barufaitis, he has been the chief negotiator for months now in, um, uh, in the whole Sega. So, he, so the Greek government is telling the creditors that, fine, we will, you know, be softer, we will be willing to engage, we will be, and we will do what it takes to find a solution that is viable for us, for Greece, and also it is viable for the Eurozone and the fate of the common currency and the political union. So I just see it as a, as a, as a gesture of goodwill. Do you, 
is it your sense that um, yeah. uh, Cyprus actually wants to? Um, I mean, what's the end game here for the Greek government? Mm -hmm. Right. Let me just say one thing about the referendum because I think that is crucial, and I, I think that the American audience and many others actually, you know, typically think of referendums that you know are, are as it were, you know, an answer to a question, and that's it. You know, do we leave, do we allow for gay marriage or not, that sort of thing. Well, the Greek referendum, and for me, it was a brilliant tactical maneuver, and the government treated the referendum not as an end in itself, but as a means to another end, and the other bigger end being improving somewhat Greece's bargaining power and showing to the lenders that you know, the Greek government is, the Greek people is willing to support an agreement, but not any agreement. An agreement, only an agreement that is viable and sustainable. And that has to mean some sort of restructuring of the debt. And I think the end game right now, we are at the stage where in the domestic political arena, Cyprus and Syriza are not only leading the political game, but they're also, and actually as of today, there is a statement of consensus signed by, by the major, but all the major political parties in Greece, giving Cyprus the, a free hand into negotiating a better deal that keeps uh, Greece in the eurozone. So this is a, a major, uh, you know, uh, uh, win for uh, Syriza, and it shows to the people in America and elsewhere that they are watching. But in Greece, we have a government with wide support and political consensus willing to negotiate a viable deal. So right now, we, we, we are at the stage where we are waiting to hear from the creditors. And if my first indications are right, there should be, or I hope there is, some sort of risk between uh, the French and the Germans with regard to how they deal with the situation. And that would be a hopeful thing. I, I want to ask you. I want to get. I want to. I want to get uh, your your take on on what these differences in terms of the French and German approach are. But just to to restate what you've told us. So it yeah. seems that Cyprus and Syriza has been has played this quite well insofar as they now look like they are the reasonable ones. They uh, Cyprus yeah. now seems like he has put himself now between essentially the creditors and the Greek people, where he's like, look. Yeah. I don't have the power <laughs> to sign this document. Here's the proof. The Greek yeah. people are pissed about yeah. it, and they would, um, you know, it, it, it wasn't explicit, but for all yeah. intents and purposes, they're willing to walk away from the EU uh, and, as opposed to taking this deal. So I'm here to help you guys, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, and, and that's what he's trying to project, right? That That I'm the only thing yeah. standing between... Uh, you and the Greek people who would walk away with with uh, the European Union, and uh, who knows yeah. what could happen after that? Yeah. Uh, let let if I may add, that, please. If, if I may add, that also that the Syriza government uh, has uh, the backing of the major other major political forces in Greece. This is not insignificant. The fact that there has been a national consensus today signed. Uh, uh, by with, with the oversight of the president of the Greek democracy. This is a major deal. He's also saying to the creditors that my government is backed by the other political forces in Greece as well. Right. So in other words, it doesn't matter if you think that I'm the problem, because you, it, now everybody exactly. says that they're the problem. And as uh, to throw you a bone, here I'll get rid of that, uh, that finance minister who was a little bit outspoken. So, exactly. So, all right, so tell us what... What are before we get to the different um, approaches by yeah. by by French uh, by France and Germany? What are the implications if there is no deal? Uh, then a, and money is not freed up. Euros are not sent to Greece. Then the Greek government needs yeah. to pay pensioners. They need to pay uh, federal employees or, or uh, government employees, and so they need to go out and issue. Uh, basically IOUs, which is, for all intents yeah. and purposes, a new currency. And then um, what, what are the implications of that? Like, what are people afraid well, of if the EU, if they go off, if Greece leaves the EU either formally or informally mm -hmm. by creating another currency, 
and controlling their currency, which they would then devalue and then presumably pay off their debts in this, um, you know, cheaper currency. What 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 happens? Right. There's two, three points to this. One is that it's not at all certain that, you know, the debt with a devalued currency, the debt will somehow devalue as well, because all the debt agreements of the past five, six years have been signed and have effect under, I think it's under a British law, or it's not, I'm not clear on that. I can't remember clearly that, but all I can say, and I think I'm right, is that it's not as simple that, you know, the debt will be uh, relieved by virtue of change in the currency. But the second point, and the most important point, is that, well, the first thing that will happen in the event of, a, of, of another currency is that the currency will be devalued, and the value of whatever is left in the banks and elsewhere will deteriorate for, 50, for, for 30 40%. So people are afraid that they're going to be worse off in the short term, that the humanitarian crisis will accelerate, and I think there are many indications that it will become worse and worse. People have been talking about rationing in various things, you know, uh, even, even food on some occasions. And um, the third point that I wish to make about this is it's not clear to me, and even to many commentators that support this, this route, that the Greek economy is in such a state that even by devaluing its currency, it will regain competitiveness. So we will be talking about more than a lost decade here. Uh, and, and people who have been arguing about that, about sort of changing currencies, they also are not certain whether this would work for the benefit of the Greek economy in terms of, because there are other things that need to, to, to be implemented if, if it is for Greece to start growing again. So the situation is very grim on the alternative, you know, uh, uh, parallel uh, coin or parallel currency question. That, uh, that, and that's on the Greek side. What about on the European yep. Union side? Like, what is the leverage well, points that is making yeah, France and yeah. Germany were, uh, function differently? Right. Well, before just tackling this, there's also a very interesting new uh, idea that, that actually Wolfgang Schäuble, the German finance minister, has just recently voiced, which is to say that a sort of temporary exit from the euro for Greece, then Greece would somewhat somehow devalue its currency. It's not clear whether it would be like a Greek euro or something else. And at some point later in the future, when it regains competitiveness, Greece would have to come back to the eurozone. Uh, but I mean, again, you know, you see people from the left arguing for an exit, and you see people from uh, uh, the, the, the core German right arguing for an exit. It's really difficult to, to, to assess all these points. Um, now, to move to, to your question about uh, France and Germany, it's really difficult at this point uh, uh, to just, to, for one, to be very clear on what the points of division are. But one, I think, can politically say that clearly that, you know, Francois Hollande and, and, and French social democracy, they, uh, they are facing the problem of political extinction from a burgeoning Marine Le Pen. And, and, and right-wing nationalism that is very, very anti-European. So, bullying Greece the way that, you know, the institutions have been doing that for the past months will obviously work, not work for the benefit of Hollande's government in the impending elections in France. So it is in, in the interest of the French government to weigh in and try to find a sensible a deal with Greece with some sort of settling of its debt. But it's far from clear now to see if this rift will be uh, expressed, voiced openly, and, and, and what shape a deal might take. Okay, so if I, if I hear you correctly, the domestic politics yeah. of France are such that a, 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 the exit of Greece from the EU or a sense that the EU is a weak institution and not very helpful will hurt, uh, will, will strengthen the opposition and the far-right opposition uh, in, yep. in France to the point where the, the uh, current French government feels it's necessary to show that the EU is viable and, and vibrant and functioning. Yep. And, um, but, but so is the, the implication, is the implication yep. if, if Greek 
exit, if Greece exits the EU or uh, is in some type of de facto exit of, of the EU, that it simply uh, weakens the, the EU because, just conceptually speaking, what's the point of it if it can't resolve these type of things? Well, from a conceptual point of view, true, but there's, there are also many other economic and political considerations. Obviously, you know, although people have been, you know, saying and arguing that, uh, you know, the contagion will be limited and everything. And I, I, and I think that this is what, I mean, the, the point that many are making, including the Americans, is that in a, it, it, it's not clear what the implications will be, A, for the future of the Eurozone as a whole in the event of a Greek exit, and B, uh, uh, for, the start, for the state of the of global economy. So there's many things at stake you know, in a scenario where Greece would exit the Eurozone, would be forced to exit the Eurozone because there's no, you know, uh, uh, formal way to kick Greece out of the Eurozone. Um, the, the, the implications are not clear. It is indeed uncharted waters. Mm. All I can say is that in this event, we will be talking about an unprecedented uh, humanitarian disaster in Greece. Right. Even more so than, than, than what we have been witnessing so far. Now, um, we, we spoke about why France might be inclined, uh, why the French government might be more inclined to make a deal. Why would Germ the German government uh, be less so? And then, and, and go ahead. I think, the, the, I mean, there the have been ideas voiced around in, in, in the German right, most pertinently, but also in other parts of, sort of in the German establishment, into... Uh, the fact that I mean, the idea is about the future of the eurozone and the fact that that a, a smaller eurozone with more homogeneous, if you will, economies will be better for uh, for Germany and for Europe. So there are many. So this is one part, one argument that people have been using in Germany, uh, and obviously this argument is clothed into you know right wing populism into saying that we cannot uh, keep bailing out Greeks forever, etc. Um, yeah, it seems to me you want to be careful about the yeah. the uh, homogeny arguments uh, emanating from yeah. Germany. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, let me yeah. uh, so let me ask you uh, uh, lastly, like, where does does Russia fit in any of this? I mean, is there is there some notion of that um, you know um, a, a a beginning a, de yeah. a disintegrating EU or at least a weak EU or a, 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 an injured EU in some yeah. way changes the balance of power. Yeah. Right. I mean, Greece has another geopolitical argument that I think is sensible, is quite sensible, which is to say that you know, if you look at where Greece is located, indeed. There is a, a, a um, you know, uh, we are in the middle of sort of disturbances, uh, uh, regional disturbances and, and chaos. Uh, if, you, if you look at Libya, if you look at the conflict in Russia. So Greece's point is that, you know, a deal that is viable will not create, create chaos in Greece. Now, and in that sense, it's in the, in the interest of everyone to have a stable, Euro, stable European democracy in, in an unstable region. Now, uh, I wouldn't give much, uh, you know, leeway to, to uh, the, 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 the moves that the Greek government is doing, uh, the openings that the Greek government seems to be doing uh, uh, towards Russia. All I would say is that a problem in the foreign policy in previous governments is that they weren't more dimensional enough. So the Greek government right now is just trying to uh, talk to as many different, uh, you know, players in the regional setting as they can, uh, and just try and, you know, develop a sort of more dynamic foreign policy. So I, I think I know there's much talk about, you know, deals with Russia, et cetera, but so far nothing tangible has come out. So I, I don't really think that that's a danger, if you will. And, and so what is the, uh, lastly, what do you, give me your sense of yeah. timing. I know that right now, um, I believe um, uh, Merkel is in, is in France, and yeah. uh, I think like literally right now, and that tomorrow there's supposed to be a, uh, a special session of, uh, yeah. of EU members. What, what, what do you think, I mean, what's the timing? Because... Right. We, there's right. no banks open, is my understanding, in Greece right now, right? Exactly. I mean, 
Exactly. And there's also another development happening right now as we speak, which is to say that the uh, European Central Bank Board is convening to decide whether we could retain liquidity in the banks in the same measures. I think that is the more likely scenario, and that's to say that will allow the banks to be to carry on being in the same status as they are right now. That's to say, issuing 50 euros per day uh, to, to people. Now, I think the make or break moment for whether we'll have a deal or not, regardless that a, an actual deal might take some weeks, even, is tomorrow because there will be a Eurogroup uh, meeting and uh, not an EU, but a Eurozone member um, summit, member states summit. Now, my sense is that in a very pragmatic way, the Greek government will seek to accept some version of what uh, was proposed, some better version of what has been proposed put on the table so far, and it would also seek to get a clear statement, or if not statement, some other measure that would signal that a debt relief is imminent. Hmm. I don't think any deal can be reached without sort of some sort of uh, uh, agreement on the question of the debt. Um, and, I, and, and in this regard, last week's IMF, um, so the, 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 the paper that came out of the IMF uh, last week regarding the sustainability of the Greek debt will be uh, uh, is, is uh, one sort of tactical gain at the hands of the government. Because now, uh, publicly, the IMF says that, you know, Greece said has to be restructured. So tomorrow, to just sum up, we'll have another crisis meeting. But I think it's now up to the creditors to decide whether they want to get a deal with Greece and its government. There's no other player that they can you know, wait to be elected or whatever after a regime right. change. So it, it, it's now it's going to be, on, it is on their hands to decide whether they want to get a deal and offer some debt relief or they want to break up or whether they want to just break up the Eurozone and, and, and then see what happens. Fascinating. Uh, George Yanakopoulos, um, historian based in London and a visiting fellow, NYU, uh, starting this fall. Thanks so much for your time today. Very much appreciate it. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thanks for having me. Bye.